Welcome back to Northwind Aerial. Today we are going to be going over a pretty in-depth look on three different ways of getting your DJI drone flight logs from the drone to CalTopo. Why is this important? CalTopo is the bread and butter of search and rescue mapping, essentially. It's a great way of keeping all of your people on track, seeing exactly where you've searched for both search purposes as well as after action reports, and showing just how much ground you covered. Usually it works by activating the GPS on your phone and then it broadcasts your data directly to the CalTopo map to show a real-time line of where you've walked and exactly where you are. As drones become more and more common in search and rescue operations, it's becoming more and more important to have the information of exactly where that drone has searched overlaid on CalTopo. That's why today we're going to be taking a look at exactly how to get that data to Cal Topo. Let's start off with the first method, which is by far and away the most hands-on method, which is pulling the data directly from the controller. In order to do that, you need to plug your controller in using the USB and then turn it on. You wanna make sure you do it in that order, otherwise it freaks out and doesn't read it correctly. As soon as it's connected, you'll see over here, for instance, DJI RC Plus, which is what this is, it's for the M30T, and you'll pull that up. You'll go to internal shared storage, You'll go to DJI, you'll go to com.dji.industry.pilot, and then you'll go to flight record. And then it'll automatically pull up every single flight that you've made over however long you've had the drone. As you can see, the first flight on this drone was in August of 2022. We come all the way back down, and you can see the most recent flights of 1122. These are flight records from some training missions that I was doing today for some other videos that are coming up. So you might think, well, just open up the text document and see exactly, you know, what the data has, right? Wrong. So you open up your flight logs and this is what you're greeted with. I'm pretty sure if we try to read this out loud, we will actually summon the old gods and their incomprehensibleness will make my eyes begin to bleed. So we're just going to exit out of this and close the portal that is inevitably opening behind me that will suck me into the afterlife where I will atone for all of my sins for the rest of eternity. So we need a program that can actually read this information. And that is where Flight Reader comes in. Flight Reader is the software that I just discovered this morning as I was trying to read this devil worship we just saw. And it's a great way to get some really, really fascinating and usable information from this incomprehensible string of archaic runes. All you need to do to use the Flight Reader application is simply drag and drop your flight logs directly into it. So we'll take, for instance, this first flight record and we'll put it in. It will process it and then boom, it pulls up a ton of useful information. It doesn't just have where you flew, it has all sorts of information. It shows your speed, it shows your height, it shows your cell voltage, everything. It shows so much information. It's incredible. I need to do an entire video purely on Flight Reader and how much information it gets at this point. But what we're really looking for is the KML file. The KML file is essentially the data that shows exactly where the drone has traveled, its path in the XYZ axis of real life. Now, you can come down here and hit this KML. Usually you just get the information that shows, you know, where the drone was from like a top-down perspective. This gives you the full 3D model for you to look at and see exactly where the drone was in real time as it flew. Really, really fascinating stuff. However, this doesn't really port over into CalTopo all that great. So in order to get that information, you simply come back to the flight itself, you right click, you come down to open log folder, and you'll have all of the information that you could want right in here. And then you have the KML file that shows basically the polygon of where it flew and the KML file that shows pretty much where the exact flight path was. That's the one we're looking for. So now we have that information, we come back over to CalTopo. And that's just a simple matter of importing it. You simply come to where your flight logs are. I've already got this done because this is my second time recording this because I forgot to turn on my OBS studio when I was recording it the first time. So you come over here and you find your KML file. We're going to go ahead and import this one right here. And you'll see 18 objects not shown, doesn't matter, import, and boom, you've got a flight log right there. Perfect. This comes with a bunch of the information on it as well, such as flight mode change to go home, 60% battery. It's got all sorts of really useful information on it, but the main thing is it now shows exactly where the drone flew. And it's overlaid on CalTopo. That's really, really big, really, really good stuff. That's why we're here today, that's why you're watching this video. But that was pretty in-depth. That involved turning on the controller, pulling flight logs off of it, and then uploading them to a different app, and then changing them to this and that. There's a lot easier ways of doing that. And I know Flight Reader apparently does have a way to auto 
sync the stuff. I haven't done that yet. I haven't looked into it. I'm gonna do an in-depth breakdown in Flight Reader sometime soon. Soon. So another fast way of doing all this is simply have the logs already uploaded for you. And the way I do that is through Air Data UAV. Air Data UAV is an app you can get on your controller that once you've synced everything, as long as your controller has Wi-Fi, it will automatically sync those flights to their server. And then you can have all the information right online. This makes it super easy because you get back from your flight, you get back from your search and rescue mission, you pop up an area data UAV, you go to my flights, and then boom, right there, recent flights, exactly what we're looking for. So we'll come over here, and for instance, we'll take a look at this flight. Got all the information that I need on there, but mainly what we're looking for is the KML file. Download, it's right there. You notice it has a one because again, I'm recording this for the second time. Now with that KML file, all you gotta do is come back over to CalTopo and repeat the same process. Import, downloads, open, I don't know what's going on downstairs. Import and boom, it's right there. You've got all your information. You've got all your flight logs exactly where you want them. Super simple, super easy. Air Data UAV is what I run on basically all of my enterprise level drones because it is really easy to have those flight records backed up and stored in one space without having to think about it, without having to pull them off the controller. It's really, really useful stuff. It does get a little more pricey if you want to have way more flight logs backed up. So it is what it is. Depends on how much you or your team wants to spend. But the free version is phenomenal and I highly recommend you check it out. So that was pretty easy, right? What if I told you there's an even easier way to be completely hands off with this whole process? And it's been hidden in plain sight in this CalTopo map this entire time. This right here was automatically flown and uploaded without me even touching it. That blue right line right there is a flight path. That flight path was put on here by Eagle Eyes. Eagle Eyes is a phenomenal piece of software and I've worked very close with the guys over there. They are really great dudes, really passionate about search and rescue, and it really shows. Eagle Eyes is an entire software suite of incredible use to search and rescue. It has a color finder. It has an AI co-pilot to help you search for colors and movements. And the best part is it has native integration with CalTopo, meaning all you have to do is sign into your CalTopo account in the Eagle Eyes app that you can download directly on your controller and fly the drone with. And as long as your controller has internet access, it will automatically upload its flight paths and show exactly where the drone is in real time directly to CalTopo without doing anything else. This blue line on here is the exact flight path I took while using Eagle Eyes to search this whole area for stuffed animals for an upcoming video. Didn't have to touch anything else. That's it. Hands off. Awesome software. Eagle Eyes is fairly expensive, but it is more than worth it. You get way more than your money's worth out of it. It's about $400 a year for the entire software suite, last I checked, and they just came out with a new update just a couple days ago. I haven't even had a chance to try it out, where they've added live streaming. So we're going to be taking another deep dive into Eagle Eyes here soon, because it is such an incredible software, and it has such an incredible team behind it. It deserves its own episode again as well. So hopefully this video proves useful to you and your team. I know this is one of the things that gets asked a lot in Search and Rescue is about how to get your tracks from the drone to CalTopo. So hopefully out of one of these three different methods, one appeals to you and your team. The flight reader is about $70 a year. Air Data UAV starts off free and then scales pretty far from that, going anywhere from $2.99 a month to $15 a month. And then Eagle Eyes is about $400 a year. Each one of these programs is great in their own way. Hopefully one of them works out well for your team. If you have a different way of getting your files onto CalTopo, if you could think of a better way of doing all of this, or you just want to ask some questions about any of these softwares, please drop them into comments. I'm always happy to have these conversations. Search and Rescue is all about learning, and the best way we learn is from each other. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel, really helps us keep doing cool drone science like this. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.
God, I sure hope I had my f***ing mic turned on this time.